Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be working with bromeliads again. So it's one of my favorite topics, I don't do enough videos on it. But um, we're going to be working with a couple different kinds today and it's just going to be about propagating these guys. So I have one that hopefully will have some seed pods on it and we'll get some seeds. And I have another that is just loaded with pups. You'll have to excuse my squinting, the sun is up behind you. It's about mid-afternoon, mid-October. The door is open in here, it's hot. Um, I've turned off all the fans. It's 82 degrees in here today, or that is 28.2 Celsius for you Celsius folks out there. But um, the good thing about the greenhouse is it is summer in the greenhouse for a lot longer than it is summer outside. I know um, some of the nights are getting cold now. Some places are actually, um, there's snow in the forecast. I can't believe it already. I'm glad I'm not one of those places. Um, hopefully, touch wood. We'll be lucky if we get snow at all but anyways why don't i bring you down and we are going to work on depupping this guy together so you can see it's in a clay pot and i'm afraid to i hate to tell you it's been neglected um it, they sit on the bottom row i took this guy out when it was in bloom and he actually got burnt so there's a bloom spike there here's another bloom spike now these are blooms off my own pups so it was nice to see that I didn't get to pollinate any of the flowers in these ones. That's why I want to show you the next one as well. I did just finger pollinate a couple of the um, flowers on this. So there's a couple seed pods. But I want this guy back down to one. And being that it has one main growth still, the mother plant has not died yet. Um, it produced four pups and those pups are starting to pup. So I need to, um, I need to get this thing under control again. We potted this up together. Now we're going to unpot it and separate it out and get us a nice pup to put back in this pot. All right, so let's bring you down. Okay, well that's a little better. I'm not staring into the sun. I stole a cutting board from the kitchen. Don't tell my wife. And I think what we're gonna do first, I have just a razor blade here, it's my only tool um, that I've got so far anyways, is I'm going to take off one of the seed pods from a different bromeliad. I love this guy. Um, I don't know if I showed him all that much. I just got him at the local hardware store. I have ID'd him as a uh, Versia, I think that's how you say it, just a hybrid. Um, they have a nice f orange flame on it or yellow flame on the um, on the spike right up here. And when this guy was, I think it was an orange flame with yellow flowers on it. And every time I would see a flower, you can see the dead dried flowers, I would just, it was loaded with pollen. So I'd take my finger and just sort of move it around and take the pollen from the anthers and put it on the stigma there. And I think a couple of them took. I collected one pod, I think they call them berries, um, I collected one berry and it was full of seeds so I thought I might as well um, see if there's any more on there and do it with you. So most of these are empty but I noticed there's a couple, that one's kind of hard. This one here is a big hard berry on here so if I twist that it gives me this here which is kind of, I'm going to call it a pod but I guess the official term is berries and that is where the seeds will hopefully be it's actually super super easy here now, i'm not going to be sowing any seeds today i just wanted to show you the seeds and maybe we'll sow them at another date so i have found the easiest way to do this is just clean it off a little bit of course now we can just break it sometimes it'll just like pop open just give it a squish now I will say these these seeds have been drying on here for a long time. I did this in the springtime, so they've gone through all of the summer. And look, you can see it's divided up into three different segments. So hopefully each segment will have some seeds in it. And we'll break that open and look at that. There are bromeliad seeds. Lots and lots of bromeliad seeds. So. There is a good shot right there of what they look like. And I'm just going to find my little collection container and um, or something to collect them in and then we'll collect a few together. Here's my pod container. It was um, just something I found and it seems to be working great. I had cephalotus seeds in one side and these are more of the same. They are the seeds from the bromeliad there and I'm just grabbing a pair of tweezers and we're going to pluck some of these guys out and there are just tons so look at that 
there are so many on there and as I say this berry it contained three sort of pods that all had probably 50 seeds in so I'm just gonna throw these other pods in here so I don't lose them and you can see this is the same same plant so these ones are fresh they're still gonna have a little bit of moisture to them because I picked them right off the plant these ones have been drying for a couple weeks so I'm going to just um, wait a little while till these ones dry out a bit more and then sow them um, but that is a video for another time now let's um, move on to the harder work that was the easy part showing you those seeds there let's move on to and we'll zoom you out transplanting this guy here okay get out my tray here and first thing we're gonna do is just see what it looks like in here there is lots of water coming out of the top there we go so I don't know if you guys remember the video but we did pot this guy up together and you can see his core it was um, peat moss with some bark that I put down there we basically just left it alone so I think the best way to do this now is back with that razor blade I'm gonna see if I can cut these pups off and keep as much of the roots on each one as we possibly can and go from there so let's switch that out and I'm just gonna separate because as I say I want to see them all and see what which one is the best which one is a keeper for me so now cutting through dirt is um, and the roots is very easy with these razor blades I will say and here is my disclaimer these are very sharp if you are not allowed to buy alcohol I do not give you permission to use a razor blade so make sure you're using something a little bit duller some scissors or make sure your parents are doing this for you and they're definitely hard to cut what I did was I just put a little um, nick in it and that was able to make it pull apart hopefully you're still in the shot there we'll make sure it's focused and I'm just gonna cut right through so the little piece of bromeliad is harder than I thought it was definitely there's one pop off clean it up these pups are hardly pups anymore now they say you can actually do this and I just put that nick in again they say you can actually do this when the pup is about half the size of the mother plant there we go so I'm glad I'm doing this now before these pups which are a good size start popping themselves what else do we got on here so this one bloomed and here's a new pup from it and it actually um, just fell right apart there the um, the core of the bromeliad is tough and last one give it that little nick in there and it just splits right across so that was the mother plant that was the very original plant I bought a couple years ago down in the center you can still see where the spike is and the argument is still these things last forever even after they bloomed that that plant although it's not growing anymore it certainly isn't decaying too fast but that's the original one there you can see my little pup here that's bloomed it has produced a new um, pup as well so that seems like it's a big enough size to cut off now you can see what I've done here being that this one has bloomed already it's, it's pretty much done it's only going to be good for throwing off more pups which I don't need so I cut it at an angle I'm going to throw that one out but if you look what I did here I kept the root of the bromeliad from the other pup on this one so this one was supposed to come off of it so I kept that just to give something to to plant up a little better now that you've I sort of talked about it. I'll show you again how I did that let's see if we can clear that off a little bit so you can see the original plant again this was one of my pups that bloomed and the new pup that has grown since then I am just going to cut at an angle and try to remove the old plant with keeping the roots from it to feed the new plant 
Now yeah, this one didn't actually go as smooth as I had hoped. It didn't go as smooth as the first one. First one was like all nonchalant, but um, there we go. So now it's got a bit of a root system still to it and good looking little pups. So looks like I have four pups left on this guy and I'm just going to discard three. So you can see the size of the pups that haven't bloomed yet. This is definitely a keeper. It could bloom at any time. Once it blooms, then it will start to pop again itself. And there's another nice size one that is blooming size, ready to um, go at any time. And here's a couple, a couple smaller ones. And like I say, that's that's a good size to take them. Not too big, not too small. Um, not much left on here for the roots. The big root ball and three roots. So I'm just going to do that. Those will start to grow pretty easily. So that is um, how we divide these guys. And now I'm just going to repot them up. Okay, so off camera, I made up my mix that I want. Now this is going to be a, a mix of fine fur bark or small fur bark, a bit of perlite and peat moss, sort of all mixed together there. I think that'll be a good mix for the plants. And I didn't do much for clearing or for choosing a new one. Gosh, well, that one is um, done. That is garbage there. I'll throw that in the garbage. And we'll just go right on top. The only thing I did do is try to clean my clay pot. Bromeliads get pretty top heavy, so um, I scrubbed the outside of the pot pretty good. And I think what I'm going to do is um, go for one of these little pups here. And just see, this is, this is a pup of a pup of mine. So I want to see if I can get my own pup to bloom again. And I'm just going to backfill while holding it in. This is a dry mix for now. I'll give it a good drink just to unpack the mix in after. But I think I'm going to go for the, the small and dainty look this time in the pot. I think a single small bromeliad looks good as opposed to the cluster sort of there. So you can see the depth I put it at. It's already pretty sturdy in there. Um, I think it'll stay just fine, especially once there's a little bit of water. And I'm trying to avoid the bark if I can right now, and I'm just getting some of the peat. The peat will help sort of glue everything together almost as it um, gets wet. And there we go. So there is a freshly planted bromeliad. Looks great in the pot. Um, I love the way they look when they're freshly potted up like that. So now I just have to figure out what to do with these other ones here. I'll have so many bromeliads, especially um, if I sow some seeds as well. So, anyways, I think we'll leave it at that. I'm going to give it a drink. I'm going to figure out what to do with these other three bromeliads and go from there. I hope you like this video. If you want to see more videos on bromeliads and other things in the greenhouse, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.